Hello friends, welcome back to another video. In today's demo, the topic is SQL Aggregate Functions. Aggregate functions are used to perform various mathematical operations in SQL. For today's demo, we will take a look at five different aggregate functions. Sum, Min, Max, Average, and Count. So let's get into SQL Server Management Studio and get started. So as always, I'll create a connection to my uh, SQL Database Engine. Uh oh let me click on View. Object Explorer, okay. Let me refresh this quickly. I'm already connected, but if you don't know how to connect, you just click on this plug here, and then you just type in your, your local host, your login, and then your password, and you hit connect, okay. I'm already in there. Now for this demo, we are going to use AdventureWorks 2019 database, okay, because we are not modifying any data, we are not making any um, delete or upsets, right? So uh, click on uh, SQL, sorry, AdventureWorks 2019 and click on New Query. Now, before I actually dive into today's topic, I want to answer um, the previous video's um, uh, to-do, okay? I gave out uh, this to-do to create a new table called Employee in uh, your TestDB database, which is the ID, job title, and then the hire date. And I remember when I gave that uh, to-do, I showed the table where to pick the data from, and that was the human resources at Employee in adventure works okay now with this uh, approach i'm going to do the select into and because i'm in adventure works 2019 uh, database right now i have to pass the, the database name the schema and then the table name for this select into to work as i expect it to right because i'm in adventure works 2019 i want to create this employee table in my test db database so before i go about this um i run this script here I just want to make sure I don't have the employee already created. I do. So let me just quickly delete it. Let me quickly remove it just so this can be. Okay, let me refresh my database tables. All right, so I don't have it, uh, the employee table here anymore, right? So if I execute this screen, actually, let me comment this out and show the data. Okay, so this is the data I'm about to um, put into my employee uh, table in my test DB. So I'm going to comment it out here. And I'm going to run this script. Now, if I refresh the tables here on the test DB now, I should see employee table and then I should see some data in there. Okay. So, yeah, so this completes uh, the task from that video. So, let's get started with today's topic. Now, since we are using AdventureWorks um, database, I want to show you the table that we are going to be working with. And you know what? Let me just select so that from sales dot sales or the detail i just want to check these two tables and see which will be good for us to work with so we have okay let me run this and see okay so we do have the sales id the due date and um we have the total, total due, yeah, subtotal, tax amount, freight, and total due. Okay, we'll be working with the sales order header table, okay? Sales order header, okay? So the first one that we are going to start with is sum, all right? So sum, and let me see, table to work with, okay? So let's assume we wanted to see all the sales that were made in this table, sales or the header table, right? We could just do the sum. And I'm going to do um, the sum of the total due because the total due, I know my image is covering it, but that's okay. The total due amount is just a sum of the, the subtotal, the freight amount, and then the tax amount, I believe. I haven't done it, but I assume it's the three of them, okay? So I'm going to do sum. And I'm going to do total due. And I'm going to execute it. Oh, uh, it's supposed to be total due. Execute this task. Okay, so they made a sale of about, I don't know, let me dump it here and add some comments so that I can pronounce this. They made a sale of about 123,216,786. Okay. Now you see that it has uh, it says no column name. Whenever you create an aggregate function or you use an aggregate function, 
they are somehow creating a derived form. So I have to pass an alias to the, uh, the, the derived form that is created. So I want to call this um, total sales. All right, so if I execute this now, I should have total sales here. Okay, so now that we know that uh, the sum, let's see average. Okay, what is the average sale in this table? Okay, whenever the customers make purchases, whatever they do, um, what is the average amount that is typically spent by customers? Okay, so I'm going to call this average sales. Average. And I'm going to execute this. Okay, so the average sales in this table is 3915 which is very good. It's close to 4000 for an average sale, right? I don't know what products they are selling yet, but they seem to be big for my... Uh, from from what I understand, three thousand nine hundred as an average sale is quite big. All right, so let's do um, a count. I'm going to select um, this gray here at the top and just change the aggregate function here from average to count, and I'm going to call this number of sales. Number of sales. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm counting the individual sales. Uh, that were made in this column okay that's what this column that's what i'm trying to count um and that should give me a number yeah there was about thirty-one thousand four hundred and sixty sales made okay individual sales now with this count function here you can also use that to see how many records are present in an entire table right to check um records record count basically record count in a particular table you can use the uh, the count function and this is how you typically do that so for example as you know I wanted to see how many records are there in this table I could just do select count and instead of uh, passing one column I'll do the star sorry that means count everything in this table okay and that should give me the total records in that table and I could do the same for a different table as well. Uh, what, the other one that I wanted to use was the detail, right? Let's see the count. You see, that is a bigger number. These are the total number of records in this table. So as, as much as you can use the count to check for a specific column, you can use that to actually uh, determine the total number of records that are in your table, okay? Now the next one that I want to look at is the min, and then we can start looking at the max as well. So. We want to see the minimum sale, okay, ever made in this table. What was the smallest amount that somebody paid in this table? Total due, and I'm going to do from this table again. I need just one from. The minimum sale is one dollar and fifty one cents or well fifty two cents. Okay. Uh let me give it an alias as well and call this main sales. So somebody purchased something as small as a dollar and fifty. Okay. And in this same table, what was the maximum sale that was ever made? And I want to change this to max. If I run this here. Wow, the maximum sale, what was that? Yeah, 187,487, which is very big. I don't know what that item was. It must be a vehicle. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know what AdventureWorks database is about. But yeah, that, that's a huge sale for a, for a single individual sale to be 185, sorry, $187,000. It must be a big item. All right, now that we have seen how to use the sum, average, count, min, and max, I want to dive into another um, uh, topic here. So group by clause, okay? Here the rule of using aggregate functions, any column called that is not in an aggregate must be in a group by, okay? It takes similar values that would have repeated during the aggregate and combines them. What that means is that, let's say we have this sum, Okay, and then we wanted to see what was the sum of sales by specific customers or by the customers. We have to pass the customer ID or the customer name. In this table, we have the customer ID, right? Yeah, uh, 
yeah, we have the customer ID. So what I would do here is that I just want to group the sum by the customers so that I can see the total sales made by each customer. Customer ID. Okay. Now that I have this here, if I run the script without the group by is going to fail and this is the error we are going to receive it says the sales order had a table in the column customer id which i just added is invalid in the select list because it's not contained in either an aggregate function or a group by clause so i want to use a group by because i don't want to aggregate the customer id so i will do group by group by what the customer id and now it's going to work out so now for this customer with an ID 14324, they made a sale of over $5,000, right? And for this customer with a 22814 ID, they made a sale of less than $10. So that is what this uh, group by clause helps us to achieve, to know how much sale or how much something is uh, aggregated by a specific column, right? Now, the next one that I want to talk about is the having clause. Uh oh, how did I put my my group by in between like that bad ordering let me put it here the next one i want to discuss is having clause so having is uh it functions just like the work loss okay for aggregate functions it is used to filter and create con uh, conditions for aggregate values okay now just like you'd have used a work clause for any column that you picked from a table to filter let's say uh, select the business entity ID where ID is one, like uh, 12 or where ID is 25. With having clause, whenever you aggregate a, a column and you want to say, I want to uh, retrieve data whether the, the sum of sales is greater than a certain amount, you want to use the having clause, right? Now, the values that you could filter on are not limited to the, the columns you are using in your current select statement. It can be anything in the table you are using, okay? So let's see how to use that. For example, we want to see all the customers who made sales of over 5,000. So I would just simply pass having, okay? And I'll say having the sum of sales. Remember, we have customers that made less than $10 sales, right? But this time I want to just filter the records to only customers that made sales of, sales of over $5,000. If I run this here, you see that there is no sale that is less than 5,000 in this uh, result set okay so this is how to use having whenever we write I, I want to compare uh how we write sql syntax versus the order in which sql is accused the syntax that we write okay so you see if, if you've been monitoring the queries that i've been writing i have a select from which is almost like a constant if you're using a table to work with okay and then we have the where clause where you use the filter the records you need to be able to retrieve now we start to have the group buys having an order by which i just discussed these two here the group by is where you have to, you know, group your resources by a different column. And then the having is where you filter by an aggregate column, okay, which is similar to the work loss. When you are writing your syntax, it has to follow this order. If you don't have to use any of these, um, you know, items, then it doesn't show in your query. But if you have to use all of them, then this is the order in which you have to write the syntax for it to work, you know, effectively. Now, as you write the syntax in this order, SQL does not really execute the, the syntax in the same order, okay? It typically goes to the table where it has to retrieve the data first, passes the condition that it needs to retrieve the data, and then if there's any aggregate functions that it needs to group by or, you know, aggregate, it does that before it actually selects the column that you want to see. And finally, if there's any order in which you want the data to be retrieved, it orders it for you. Now, with this said, I want to give an assignment where you have to use both the where clause and the having. That's why I had to show you how to order the syntax, okay, to get it right. So with that said, the to-do for this uh, demo, let me paste it here, to-do. We want to be able to pull all customers that made sales over 5,000, okay, with salesperson with, an, with the ID 279. So in this table, we have... We have the, the sales ID and then we have the sales person as well. Okay, and I'm saying that we only want to see the sales 
that are over 5,000, okay, but with a salesperson of the ID 279, all right? So I hope you'll be, you'll be able to, you know, work this out and hopefully you can complete answers in my next uh, video. This brings us to the end of today's demo. I hope it was very informative uh, and I hope to catch you on my next one. Thank you for watching.